Hello, hello, happy Easter to everyone celebrating. Uh, it felt appropriate to just do an impromptu live stream and, oh, I should post on Instagram stories, which I haven't yet. But before I do that, it looks like my audio is working and I just want to check. Aha, okay, I see things moving. That means the camera is working. <laughs> because last time I set this up, the camera was working. But then after I like swap things, then it stopped. So, uh, hang tight. I am going to awkwardly now film something for my Instagram stories. Actually, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I am very awkward with, ever since Instagram slightly changed things, I am awkward. Okay. <laughs> Hi! Oh, nope. Nope. Hi! Hi! <laughs> you gotta watch me awkwardly do this. I am live on YouTube right now, and we are gonna dye some yarn with some Easter egg dye tablets. So come and join me. I should be on for at least an hour, if not more, and we'll dye a lot of colorways and have some fun. I am live on YouTube right now, and we are going to try some yarn. Okay. <laughs> I did it. Hello, hello. You're going to have a, a fire. Wait, you're going to have a fire outside. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt anyone. The replay will be up uh, later. But, uh, yeah, I was itching to dye some yarn, realized I hadn't planned any Easter egg videos in my schedule and thought, well, why not just do a live stream? It's been a while since I have just popped on randomly. Um, my kids were beautiful in the photos I, I shared. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, so for my personal traditions, I, as many of you know, I am Jewish. So I do not, uh, <laughs> I did not grow up celebrating Easter, but uh, my husband did. And so therefore uh, I, yeah, do, we do some like egg hunts and stuff like that. Uh, so we, and then we talk a lot about the differences and like things we celebrate from mommy's traditions and daddy's traditions. And uh, it always coincides with Passover. And so it's like, it's not a, just like, it's never not a competition. We're lucky that we get to do so many holidays. So that's my little uh, blended family jazz. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I got started here on YouTube dyeing yarn with food coloring. It is something that is honestly so, so much fun to do. It is a really great way to get started with this hobby and playing around if you like it, because Food coloring and vinegar are the two main things that you need, and that's something that's really easy for people to get their hands on. Now, it can be a little harder sometimes to find Easter egg dye tablets, but this is my yearly reminder that starting tomorrow, these should be 50 to 75, sometimes even 90% off at various stores. Usually, the places where I tend to find them really discounted will be supermarkets, uh, Target, and I think that these ones I got two years ago, maybe, from Party City. Uh, so they had a lot there. This is not, the Dudley's brand is not a brand that I use a ton, but as you can see, I have a lot. Uh, and so we will be playing with those today. Now, the other thing I wanted to show uh -huh, is that I do have a number of different Easter egg dyeing videos that I have done over the years. And including, uh, let me make sure my computer is muted. Including one from last year, from last summer. Okay. Thanks Google. <laughs> I guess you're getting a bonus. <laughs> uh, Got a knock of a blood, that's cool. Oh my gosh, my hair was so short. Um, but one of the things that I did last year was I actually swatched. I think I had 
three, four different kits. I use a pastel kit, a regular box kit, so a regular box from the POS brand, and I use two different kinds of the color cups, the neon and the regular. And I just, before I go into a little more, I just wanted to briefly show that there are some differences in the colors that you can get between the different kits. But with the exception of a kit that has nine tablets and a kit that has six, oh, does my mouth show up? Yeah. So the difference between the kit that has nine and the kit with six, they're all extremely similar and they pretty much use the same packets but with different instructions in each one. Uh, and so that's something to keep in mind, that basically the only thing that matters when you're looking for Easter egg kits are the number of tablets. And so I never worry about the extras, although I do usually, um, I do usually donate the extras. I just like on a free cycle or be like, anyone wants some Easter stickers and egg bands and things like that. So I do donate those typically. Um, but otherwise the extras are not very important. What I always care, pay attention to are the, the cost per tablet because that's what I'm really going after these for. Uh, yeah. And so otherwise, like I got some cost ones that are these mystery kits. I got all excited. The mystery is like the kind of stickers in there, not the color tablets. I was hoping for mystery colors. And so I was disappointed by that. Uh, so that is just worth um, keeping in mind. And I'll keep that shot handy in case we need it. Um, so today we're going to start by unboxing some of these and then I'm going to boil some water and we're going to do a few different techniques. Now, in order to dye yarn with food coloring, you need to make sure you pick the right yarn base. Uh, you can dye wool and other protein based fibers with food coloring. So wool, especially superwash wool is really easy to dye. I have also dyed alpaca, silk, um, and you can dye blends. I started out dyeing 20% wool, 80% acrylic yarn. And so all of that will work. However, if you are going for 100% cotton, 100% polyester, 100% acrylic, it will work. Uh, acid dyes, which food coloring falls within that acid dye umbrella, uh, work on protein-based fibers. And so uh, that is what, that's the fiber that you want when you are dyeing yarn. And I can't see the chat. Um, let me see. Any idea where to find these online? Um, they can be really, I know they can be really hard for people to find that aren't in the United States. Uh, Target, typically a lot of places don't sell them online because they are expensive to ship, probably because of just the size to weight ratio. Uh, but last year I did, I was able to order them online from Target but I don't know about this year. I think that usually because it's such a short time seasonal item that they put it all in stores versus warehouses that they don't keep a close inventory like watch on them. So they can be hard to find online and Amazon tends to mark them up. Now, I think that if you can't find them, uh, the thing I like about that is that it's like a slow release tablet and it's fun to watch the colors spread and see what they do. But there are a lot of techniques that you can do without them. It's just a little bit of extra fun. Uh, yes, and okay, so you need to do wool. You'll need acid. Now these tablets, where are the ingredients? Do they, they don't have the ingredients. Oh, here we go. Um, sodium chloride, which will slow down color absorption probably. Sodium sulfate, sodium bicarbonate, um, they do have citric acid, but because there's sodium bicarbonate, that is alkaline. And so the tablets will actually raise the pH, especially in the area where we add them. And so therefore, the more tablets that you add to your yarn, the more acid you will need to add as well for the colors to strike. So that is something that is very important to keep in mind. But these tablets um, here have yellow five, yellow six, Red three, blue one, ooh, blue two. Fancy, blue number two. And it doesn't look like any red 40. Interesting. So blue two, when I talk about the food coloring molecules that you find in the US, the main ones are yellow five and six. 
red 3 and red 40, blue 1. Blue 2 does exist, but I don't find it very often. It's an Americolor navy. It was in an old formulation of Wilton's Black, and otherwise I rarely come across it. Um, so I'm very excited to see what colors we have here. Um, and yeah, I think that it should be fun. So I'm gonna stand up and start unboxing. Uh, oh, okay, so the other thing that I wanted to say is that uh, these are food safe products. Um, you can use them on, you can use them on eggs and things like that. But so I'm personally comfortable dyeing yarn with food coloring using my cooking pots and pans. However, tonight I will be using my dedicated dye equipment for these dyeing projects because I am using my five gallon bucket to pre-soak yarn. And this is also a bucket that I use with acid dyes and things occasionally. So therefore, since the yarn has pre-soaked in a container that is dedicated for dyeing yarn, everything else I'm gonna use is dedicated for dyeing yarn. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, but otherwise, I, you know, if I'm using one thing that's dedicated for dyeing yarn, everything else I'm using is dedicated for dyeing yarn, even if I'm using food coloring for the project. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to peek and see if some of these other ones have blue too as well. Now I'm going to hide my face and tilt this so that way I can see the chat. And feel free to leave questions. And I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna test out dyeing. I'm gonna use, I didn't protect my work surface today because it is food coloring. I just always wash it down. Um, but I'm gonna try adding boiling water to pans so I can do more things on the counter and then transfer things back to the stove so it can heat more. Oh, I'm thirsty. Pace off just ended. So we had like pizza and that was really fun. And then you'll never believe it, but Ryder wanted matzah pizza. And so if you're Jewish, you might recognize uh, these little foil pans. I use the Manischewitz cake mix. Oh dear, I got stuck in my shirt. I use the Manischewitz cake mix and I add like shredded zucchini to it for breakfast for the kids. Okay, so this is the That's So Bunny one. We are going to separate. Those are the, oh, there's lots of egg stands. Um, and then we've got stickers. Ooh. So it looks like we've got probably a red, orange, yellow, purple, green, and blue colored tablet. And this is a set of six. Now, I think, hmm. I have no idea if people Yes, so the formulation is different. Oh wait, this one has blue too in it as well. The past classic kit has blue too. Why have I not been so excited, more excited about that? Interesting, okay. Um, but the formulas are different. There are, I don't really care about the instructions. Um, the formulas are different for uh, just in terms of the ingredients list, but I believe that if ingredients are less than a certain percent of the item, that you, they don't have to go in a certain order. So the kids are gonna like these stickers. But I will recycle all these boxes. And let's see. Um, you have some bath tablets called Color My Bath. You're curious to try. I mean, they'll probably work, um, but the thing with like bath tablets and crayons is those tend to be pretty expensive. So that's the only concern. Oh, Lucas is gonna love these emoji stickers. So since I, again, purchased these for dyeing, if there's a lot of extras um, that aren't recyclable, like sometimes there's extremely Easter, um, like these are just little bunnies, but sometimes there's more religious stickers <laughs> in the packs and so, that's why I try to donate, but otherwise things like the kids would use all this. 
Uh, so this is the fling, flinny face. Oh, funny face. Okay. I don't think the kids have ever dyed eggs before. I think that I did it that one. I mean, maybe I did it once with friends as a kid or something, but I did it for a video once. And then I tried the, well, it's infamous in my mind, the trying to use rice so soaked with food coloring to dye yarn. The yarn looked amazing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the, uh, Uh, so the yarn was awesome. Unfortunately, the I couldn't get the starch out. So someone asked recently if you can dye yarn with purple potatoes. And probably, except I bet the starch would be the same kind of issue and it'd be really hard to get out. I wonder what kind of craft project we can use this wire for. The kids... Well, the kids are like me. They're, they like to keep everything. It's like, oh, it could be useful for something. Oh my gosh, these ones are so cute. Oh, that is so cute. Okay, I should let them use it for something. Oh, oh my gosh, this comes with little pom-poms for the tails. That's so cute. So cute. I feel like I have some other weird Easter egg contraptions around. Okay, so I will say as far as kits go, this, um, the Dudley brand is very, very like Easter bunny, kind of very secular, like secular. Um, some of the POS kits have like crosses and stuff like that. Um, so, which of course isn't necessarily a problem, just not something that I'm gonna use or not something that I would give my, um, <laughs> to the Jewish preschool. <laughs> um, but, okay, these are, this is adorable. Uh, I've probably, no, I don't know if I've used Dudley brand. I may have. I have, like, so what I will probably do is save, I'm assuming the instructions for all of these are um, the same. Even if the fronts are different, they look, like, the same. Um, so what I'm going to do is save one box for the ingredients, and then I sort of will store all the ones I don't use inside a plastic bag. Um with the ingredients and the brand so that way i can remember but what's nice is that they do show uh here possible colors that you can get with the brand and so that's pretty nice again here are the tablets they are sets of six which is pretty standard let me see yay hello everyone yes so these i got at party City, I think a couple of years ago because it wasn't it must have been two years ago because last year I did not go to any stores in person uh, and I mean this year I'm not really doing that either <laughs> okay I'm gonna start boiling some water try to not let it squeal very long. So I think I want to start with a pan. And we're going to put either 300 or 400 grams of yarn here in our pan. Uh, I haven't quite decided how much, but I'm not going to be measuring the water. The water we will add hot but I think we might set it up, add the tablets, and then pour boiling water on top of it. This is not a technique I have done before, but 
uh, it'll allow me to keep everything on the counter here so I can more easily swap between different containers. Ooh. All right, now for our yarn, we've got Knit Pick Stroll. And I'm going to bring, why don't we just do three? Maybe I'll put two in a kettle um, for the next. But I'm going to arrange it. Ooh, maybe I do want to add some water uh, so that way things could spread out before I add the tablets. So, excuse me. So never mind. I'm arranging the yarn uh, like this. We will be having a low immersion type setup. And I think I haven't decided if I'm going to go like rainbow gradient on this, but each skein will probably be different. I'm not trying to have them matched in any kind of way, but I do need some acid. And hmm. where is, aha, need my tongs and my cup. It might make sense to use citric acid powder just because it is easier to uh, lower the pH with that than with vinegar. But uh, let's just start one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's six tablespoons so far. We are definitely going to add more, but what I'm going to do is wait until we bring the boiling water over uh, to uh, decide. And we're, I can pretty much guess from experience what colors these are. The purple looks way more pigmented than what I've ever seen. And when they're talking about the possible egg colors uh, that I have down here, they look very pigmented. So I'm excited. I'm gonna come down to the chat. And do, 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 do. Ah, here I am. Um, you buy like 12 boxes. Yeah, so the neon, I, I mentioned this briefly. The ne oh, I should come over here. Oh no! I hope it didn't stop anything. Okay. I accidentally closed out the window where I'm managing the stream on YouTube. I accidentally clicked that instead of going over here. Uh, and so I just wanted to, I, I should just pop out the chat so that way I can see it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, good. Thank you. Um, all right. So I'm going to make sure I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Oh. I unpause it. No. Okay, good. Uh, so the neon ones here, the orange was slightly more yellow orange. The yellow maybe was a little bit brighter, but the other, the pink, it's questionably if it was more intense, but it was pretty close to the other POS colors. Like it's, it, it was not if I hadn't kept those neon ones together when I was swatching the different ones, I might not have been able to tell the difference between the neon and the others. Uh, so as, um, so that's just, that was just my experience though. Uh, but it is when picking the one, I tend to go for whatever is the cheapest per number of tablets is how I pick them. So that's how you do it. <laughs> the Summer Mini Skin Mini Series. Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, that was a fun one. And that was when I started filming that. Uh, where, yeah. I started filming this 
uh, right after the shutdown. And I was like, okay, I don't know if I can do a summer special this year. Ooh, hmm. And I do have the playlist of a lot of my Easter egg videos uh, linked uh, down in the description. And so, yeah, so last summer I decided to go for swatching. And so I did a lot of swatching of a lot of different food coloring. And it was a lot of fun and sort of got me a little bit on a swatching bug, which has been a really, really fun journey. But now I have this, this as a reference. And so I am not testing the different um, kits. The colors in all the kits I got today are going to be the same. Like the, the colors from over here, no, I don't, don't play with you. The colors over here with the classic kit or from the pastel kit are probably the same if it's like an emoji one or like a speckled one. Some of them actually might have liquid food coloring in them, but otherwise the, the tablets, I think that they make the same tablets and then add different packaging to them. So that is what I'm thinking. Ooh. Do you love the beautiful colors? Yes, and I do have a few more slots left for the 2021 Summer Mini Skiing Mini Series pre-orders. And there's a chance that closer to when I am shipping and um, once I start shipping out the samplers in May, that are, they're not really samplers, they're sets. Each set for the summer special is dyed in, a, uh, in one of the videos from that special. So that way they are uh, five colors that are meant to go together to be used in one project, although you can separate them and use them however you want, obviously. Uh, but I have, I think, just a handful of slots left. Thank you. And yeah, feel free to add questions. Uh, right now, if you are just tuning in, we are waiting for water to boil. <laughs> We are waiting for water to boil. Um, ooh, the tweed is a really fun base. Um, not when I've dyed it a lot. Actually, I think the first time I dyed it was that tweed base was for this. And I really like how it came out. This summer, I'm really playing with, I think, what, there's like seven different yarn bases at least that I'm using. Different yarn bases to look at different like starting colors or different amount of twist or just comparing different things about all the yarn. And it's really, really fun. And I'm really excited to uh, share them with you. I'm not as excited to edit, but I'm excited to share them. <laughs> hello, hello. But yeah, I am very, very excited. So I think, I so I think that the six colors we have are going to be similar to a set of six from POS, but with maybe some slightly different formula variations, so the hue might be different. Uh, and I'm excited. I, hmm. Oh, there was one other thing from last summer that I realized is that there was a formula shift at some point with POS. Because uh, last year, when I was doing this swatching series, uh, I noticed that there was this teal green, which was very pretty, but in previous years, there was a, like a deeper blue that I really loved. So I'm not sure when that shifted, but I even went back through old videos and I was like, I swear there were two blues. I swear. And there were. <laughs> um, did I? No, at some point in here. I went searching because I was so sure. They all look so fun together in the little preview. Okay, I can go back up here. And oh, Julia, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. And oh, I've got my, uh, my droids shirt that I'm very excited. I don't have any rights to the image or anything, but I, I cut it for myself. You're going grocery shopping tomorrow. You're hoping, hoping to find a bunch for super cheap. Yes, they can. Um, I would say that if they are not more than 50% off, I don't really recommend it. Uh, sometimes I actually bought some full price last year uh, because I wanted to make some videos, but I 
given that so given that some of these can be you know two dollars for I guess this one had nine tablets so full price that's not that bad but given that you know for like the equivalent to buying a bunch of these kits what you can get if you get say just the Wilton Colorite system you get way more pigment there so they're fun to play with but uh, what I've realized is that I love them. I like to have fun with them, but there's no need to go so big. Uh, uh, there were two blues in your deluxe kit versus that like teal that I got um, in that one. Yeah, I wish I wish that they all. I don't think that they necessarily have a manufacturing date on them, but. I'm, sh I'm sure some of my older ones have two blues. Who are you gonna do spinning wheel? Yes, oh, uh, <laughs> if you want a, a, a blast from the past, go find my video when I got my first spinning wheel. And like, I think it got very, very squeaky. And I had to go, I like ran to my local yarn store to see if they had any fiber. Because I was like, I don't, I don't have any. and I. Maybe I had some fiber to dye, and so I was like, okay, I have to dye some fiber. And then I had to wait for it to dry, which was torture, because I was also like, I want something special for the first thing that I spin on this wheel. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, but, all right, I think, I think we're heating up. And I'm absolutely going to risk staining my hands tonight because um, I'm going to go ahead and cut two of these. I'm going to risk staining my hands because I um, gloves have gone up in price. <laughs> and therefore, I'm willing to stain my hands. Okay, you feel like you're boiling. You just haven't started squealing yet. So we've got 300 grams of yarn in here. And I poured six tablespoons of white vinegar on. Okay, and this, I would say, let's add a little more vinegar. One, two, Okay, so that's nine. A lot of times I might go like around a cup or so, but we've got the three skeins. Basically, I don't have that many shallow pots. Um, and the reason why I'm using my dedicated dye stuff is that I pre-soak the yarn in my five gallon bucket. And once one thing is dedicated for dye, I use all stuff that's my dedicated dye tools. But otherwise I would be comfortable using um, these tablets with my cooking pots and pans. So let's think about how we want to do this. Okay, I want my spoon. I love these dollar store spoons. Okay, I am gonna do, we are gonna put a blue in there and a purple oh that was not th those are both blue <laughs> um i thought that that was going to be purple huh okay well that's going to be green you are going to be a yellow you are probably um yep you're orange and you should be pink yes so we've got two blues. So you know I was just talking about the two blues and we've got this lighter blue. Ooh, and that brighter blue. This is really exciting. I am, a lot of times I won't touch the tablets. I am touching them today so you can get a sense as like a crude, oh, the pink, the pink is dissolving really fast and it's going chunky. Um, so you can get a sense of the colors. That is really fun. And I'm just going to pop over to here again. Um, 
And just to point out that in, oh, I keep on pausing it. In this set of mine, I didn't get the two blues. I got that teal that made me sad. Oh, awesome. Um, is there a specific pH we should aim for? Good question, and I don't have a very good answer. Um, mainly because I don't know. Um, I don't think I have tested the pH. I don't know if I've actually tested the pH in these videos. I tend to go more for has all the color absorbed to the yarn or not. Okay, so since we did not have a purple, we are going to add what I think is pink down here. So that's funny because they show all these purples that you can can mix. And uh, I could have sworn, I mean, this, this one does look like it has some uh, reds. It does look to me like it has some reds in it, that blue, just from the like surface. Okay, you can go there. And then you are yellow, so you can go right there. You are going to be orange. You can go in there. And then, hmm. I think I'm going to open up one more. A green can go over there. And basically, we're going to let these dissolve. I am not poking these newer ones as often. But what you can see is I'm probably going to be using 18 tablets total in this pan, which means that the tablets don't necessarily go that far. Uh, I want to go pink. Actually, let's put you in here. I am putting them a little bit low so that way we do get some color. Um, okay, the yellow one is there. This other yellow put there. And then the orange, I think your orange can go there. Green, got a lot of green now. We will probably, we could, well, the greens tend to spread a lot. Uh, so we will probably get some green over there. Um, we could end up with a lot of white left, but also maybe not. And what we don't know, ooh, I see purples happening. What we don't know is what's happening beneath the surface. So that we don't know. Now what I think I want to do, well, I'll wash my hands really quickly. But I'm going to come in. I'm at adding a little more water. how much things might spread this blue is deep it is pigmented it is beautiful and I am really holding back from wanting to like move and spread but I don't know if you can see things are still definitely bubbling like the tablet in there hasn't dissolved yet um, oh there's a tablet in here we could end up with dark packages we can end up with more spread uh, you never quite know what you're going to get. All right, I am going to clean up a tiny bit. Get rid of this. 
Yeah, so if the kits are two for a dollar, then this isn't so bad. But if the kits are, if you're paying three dollars for each kit, and then we just use three in this pan, that's really expensive, given that for like five dollars, you can get two ounces of acid dye. But I will say, one thing that made me incredibly happy was watching everyone who tagged me who after dying eggs they went and got um oh i should take a picture of this everyone who was dying eggs at home then went and got uh and used the leftovers on yarn even people who a lot of people who don't dye yarn all the time so that made me really happy uh i'm curious it's still quite warm. Definitely not a simmer or anything, but it's warm. I will transfer it to the stove, but I just wanted to see how much things will move from just it, us sitting here. And I will post a picture on Instagram. Oh, I forgot. I forgot that I set that, that up that way. Um, I keep going and like manually shutting off this camera, but I was like, oh wait, no, I made a different scene to make it easier on myself. It takes me a year to do anything on my phone, especially because my phone, like once you pass that two year mark, it starts to, I mean, we're like two and a half, it's two and a half, but it's been flagging fine it's been like like falling behind okay let's see the test um yes so uh kathleen i often like to test when i especially when i have nine tablets and i can't tell which color they are then i will definitely test them on a paper towel i assumed the one tablet was going to be purple because it looked purple in my hand and instead we had two blues so i think a downside for this kit is that they uh didn't show the colors that were actually present in the kit they showed colors that you could mix but i think a positive is that they had two different blues which can help with a lot of mixing so i do wish though that then there was a pink and a red they're going to give you primaries, then why give you the orange and the green? Maybe because orange and green, as we have learned from color mixing, can actually be harder to mix uh, because a lot of blues and pinks are more potent than yellow. So a lot of times you need a lot more yellow to get a good medium color. So maybe that's why we have the, um, we don't have a purple, a true purple, but we have orange and green. Would you call this space dyeing? Yes. Yes. I mean, it can still be space dyeing even if you move it. And you can certainly move the fiber and help the colors spread a little bit, which I think I might do just because I do like it. And I feel like being actively involved. And since I'll be moving it over to the stove anyway, but I'm going to do one that is going to be a lot more, excuse me, uh, of a surprise. And we'll set up the yarn in the pan, add some tablets, and then just watch and wait. And in that one, we might do, we could do all, all six tablets. We could do all six tablets and just see what happens and get us deal with the averages. Usually the average is green, but <laughs> it might not be. The average might be a lot more blue in this one. That blue looks extremely pigmented. Um, well, let's see, um, the green will probably gobble up the yellow. Yes, that tends to happen. Um, they could be on Amazon, but Victoria, honestly, they're probably really expensive. Like if, if I could, um, if I, yeah, if I could like contact the suppliers or something and get some, so that way I could like put in kits, then I would try to do that. But Honestly, like I think that, um, yeah, the for on Amazon, I think I would I would say like one of these for like ten dollars, which just 
is such a huge markup. Um, huh, okay, well, it, there may have been some red in there, but like this color coming out is absolute. So you're right, it's possible there's a little bit of pink in there and that we're seeing breaking. But the purple that we have with POS, the purple that we have with POS is very, like you see the pink and then you see the blue spread. There's definitely breaking there, but it absolutely reads a purple. Uh, there's sometimes with some acidity, I found like with Wilton's Violet, if you add acid to it, it does look blue and then looks purple on the yarn. But uh, we'll, we'll see if that shifts. Um, it's also possible that different years, the batches are slightly different and the proportions are slightly different. Um, so let me see. Um, will I still heat set it? Yes, I will. I just uh, didn't want to try to move the camera from the counter because I wanted to unbox all of them on camera tonight because I did not decide I was going to do this until like a couple hours ago and I was not prepped. <laughs> uh, and I want to, um, yeah, I just decided to try this at the counter versus being at the stove and then being sort of more limited to what is happening. And so I'm not sure how much things are spreading right now. Not very much. Uh, so you're not after egg dyeing. Yes, yes. You feel bad pouring your dye out, but you haven't, oh, you don't have any bared yarn? Well, you could save it. Although if you put eggs in it, then I don't know. I might not necessarily save it, uh, but you you can save the dye um, to use at a later date. Uh, you can also over dye if you have remnants, so you can play with that and play with over dyeing. Um, but don't feel bad pouring it out also. Uh, you didn't dye eggs, but told a friend about doing it and showed her a link to Kenneth's video. Woo hoo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, You'd like to dye silk fiber, but you don't want to dye with cold or hot water. Um, I have dyed silk with warm wa with hot water, uh, but I think there's a dye called PS. I dyed some 100% silk yarn, and it turned out beautiful. Uh, but I, maybe I did something similar to this. I started cool, and then I went and heated it up slowly. Um, here you're in lockdown, so Amazon might be the only way to go. So Target had some last year. Let me go look and see. Here, let's go shopping. Let's go shopping. Let's see what we've got. Um, discontinued for shipping. Um, so I haven't tried the spritz kits. Um, and so, okay, now since we're shopping, we can talk about other things to avoid. Metallic, they can have some fun things in there, but that's usually a glitter or something. So if you want glitter or other things like that for other crafting projects, I would go for those. Otherwise, if they're, especially if they're more expensive, then I wouldn't necessarily go for it. Uh, those are fillable eggs. These are... Um, these are liquid, ooh, the refill pack, uh, but that's also discontinued for shipping. So I think that because of the time of year, ooh, oh, the, are these just cups but no tablets? Oh no, it has tablets. Uh, so it looks like you can get some of these uh, spritz ones. And it comes with six tablets. I love that there's that lone pink one. So that is funny. Sorry about the timer. All right. Okay, who said that it was purple? You are right. You are right. That one blue is a purple. It is just the bluest purple. I think I have ever seen. Um, uh, 
Uh, now that it really has had time to spread, I can see that. And I will share that on Instagram too. Uh, so that way you guys can get a better close up. But this is way more, that blue is way more pigmented than I think what I see with um, other kits. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Sorry, everyone. Okay, and I think that hopefully that uploaded. Yep, okay. Um, and I can try to show this way. Which is a goofy, oh, here we go. A goofy way to try to do it. But you can see, like when I took the picture, you can see that there's that red center. So, uh, yeah, it just woke up. Whoa, thank you so much, Susie. Thank you for the super chat. What do you think is used as a binder in the tablets to make them solid? After you did the last soft blank, your mind went crazy thinking about what you made with your own shapes, small silicone molds for casting. Uh, I think it's salt. At least on these ones I'm using today, it's mostly salt. Um, yeah, it, the first ingredient is just sodium chloride. So I think that I imagine that they're made very, very similarly to how you might make a bath, like a fizzy bath bomb, uh, which I do have my recipe I will share my little recipe what Epsom salts yeah so I would do it Okay, so let me look. I'm gonna post my bath bomb post, which is on Hub Pages. Measure out your dry, dry ingredients. Where do I have? Okay, here's the recipe. Yeah, so I would use baking soda, citric acid, Epsom salt, cornstarch, and essential oils, which I would skip. So you could probably do a little bit of cornstarch, a little bit of um, just citric acid, the food coloring, you might not even need extra water and then sort of put it in a tiny silicone mold and let it dry. And if it's compact enough, it might solidify. Hello, everyone. Lunchtime. Hoo wee. In yeah, I don't know if they sell these kits in Canada. I know people in Europe have had trouble finding them. Uh, but oh, I was going. I, I'll go back to the yarn. But we were we were looking up this at this brand. Um, so this one is still available full price, but it is available for shipping. Looks like I could add ten to my cart. It looks like they have um, clear stickers um but then yeah they have six six tablets oh and they have a uh either white or clear crayon that you could use for resists i have so many like clear wax like crayons from these kids i have just like i have a like container of them somewhere so <laughs> Oh, maybe. I mean, certain, um, I'm not sure about lost nudes, but maybe, maybe. Okay, I'm going to go back to the yarn. Do, do, do. Oh, man. I think that, like, one downside I have when compared to, like, other streamers is that or like gaming streamers, is that I'm not at a desk. I <laughs> like sit on the floor. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, my kids are still begging to watch my Minecraft video. Um, so let's see. The water is warm, but I can touch it. Let's see. It looks like the tablets have dissolved. Ooh, a lot of that. A lot of that color. Ooh. Wow. So we are using superwash. Whoa. Oh, no. Okay, we still got dye color in there. Okay, I was like, where's all the color, Rebecca? Where's all the color? Whoa! Did you see me move that? Oh, there's green down there. <laughs> I'm just like poking around, minding my own business. Oh my gosh, there's so much color just like in these pockets waiting. Ooh, I think both of the blues are purples though. There's, a, there's red in both of the blues. Um, but this one is so deep. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I am, we've got warm water here. Uh, okay. Let's add a tiny bit. Just to give everything a nice, good idea and be like, spread, be merry, have fun. Um, so I will say in terms of like representations of things that I've dyed in the past, I will take a picture now before I moved it over to go heat. Um, because I've definitely poked it. But this is one reason why these are fun. They're so concentrated. And because of the sodium bicarbonate in them, it does take longer for the color to strike to the wool. And so therefore, okay, good, everything's still working. Since it takes longer for the colors to strike, um, that means that they can spread a little differently and that you can have fun. And since they're dry, you can like insert them into yarn cakes and just have all kinds of fun, but we are, I think I said I wasn't going to, but more acid never hurts. Okay, I'm gonna carefully take this to the stove and turn on the heat. We're gonna keep that on medium. Okay, and now, gotta turn things because I want you guys to be able to see into the pot, but I also need to make sure I can see into the pot. Okay. Maybe need the um, step stool. Okay. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to bring in, I think just one skein of yarn and there's no acid on here yet and we are going to add I don't know how much vinegar yet whoa the blue has moved for sure the center of the pink has blue come up in it um oh and the green is moving I see some green coming up underneath the orange ooh ooh This is like a minute after the move. I should remember that I'm doing these pictures. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yep, thing, things are moving and spreading. Probably added too much water, but I don't really care. Um, if everything ends up green, that is fine. Okay, let's add one, two, not a dust bunny, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and remove a Rebecca hair. And now we're going to add hot water. To our dye pot. Okay. 
Okay, we are going to spread it out. Okay, and this time I am not, okay, I'm going to have to bring it a little closer to me. Because I want to be able to see. But we are going to do red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purpley or blue that we don't know. And bring it here to you. And I am going to also take a picture of this. And we will watch how things spread. Hoo-hoo! The pink is all purple now. I see some teals. I see, ooh, this is so fun. I am adding more vinegar um, to the pan on the stove. So I've added so much water to it that I'm like, okay, at some point, I love the spread, but I want things to strike. So I'm adding like a cup of vinegar just all over the surface. Um, and I expect, oh my gosh, this is ballooned. This is this one right there has grown in just a huge size. That is so cool. I do. No. Okay, but you guys can tell me. I want to poke. Should I poke? I, I really want to poke it. It is really hard for me to not poke it and push. If I poke it, I just want to push the tablets down into the yarn a little bit. I probably should have twisted this more. We could end up with like pastel and the colors in all one area. But I've realized lately that I get really hung up on how asymmetric yarn might be. And with hand dyed yarn, asymmetry is fine. I am knitting with like when I'm knitting my um working on my sweat comfort fade cardi and some of the yarn in there, I was like, oh, unquestionably, like there is less of like the deeper colors in this end section of the yarn than there was before. And it's okay. It's part of the character of the yarn. And so I shouldn't like a lot of times I get so focused, especially with speckles, on getting them even that then I end up going, I mean, like super heavy. I'm not very good at like restraint when it comes to speckles. And so that's something I'm excited to explore more of. And I realize I want to see the chat. Don't poke, poke, don't poke. Um, oh, Don, thank you for the super chat. I missed it when I was up there. Thank you so much, Don. You to drive to Melbourne next week. Woohoo! I went there once. I have not been, so I have only been to, um, I, I lived in Brisbane for a semester. Um, so I went to UQ. I was at St. John's. That's where um, I was living. So for the first semester of my junior year in 2004, I'm feeling very old right now. Uh, and I traveled up and down the, the Eastern coast. We went to Sydney and we went to the Melbourne Cup. Uh, and then we went up to Cairns and then did like a Great Barrier Reef tour. We went to Harvey Island. Uh, we went to, uh, what, Fraser Bay, I think. And yeah, we did all kinds of like, like we, you know, I think I've, I traveled more in that one semester more than I probably visited of like the U.S. It felt like. Um, your kids were very impressed that the yarn lady plays Minecraft. Thank you. <laughs> There's some things that I realize that like with the kids and like when they're talking and I'm like, oh, well, actually, you know, Spider-Man, like Spider-Man is Marvel and Superman is DC. And like, they're like, oh, do you know more? And they're asking, and it's like, actually, I mean, I haven't read the comics, but I've watched a lot of the movies. So like, I know all this information. 
<laughs> and same thing with like because I played Pokemon Go growing up and because I played Pokemon Go I know most of the Pokemon so I feel like sometimes I'm like I kids are gonna like ooh she knows things <laughs> so yeah um but I I'm glad it the fact that a lot of people commented that their kids were like wait you watched a Minecraft video and I thought that 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 was really fun. My kids are like, I want to watch it every day. And I'm like, no, I can't handle watching myself like that. Um, the pink broke on the eggs itself. The water looks dark blue. Okay, so then maybe they do have, I wish that they had like ingredients for each tablet. So then we would know what was in there. Dust bunnies and hair, a true Easter video. <laughs> hello, hello, poke and don't poke, no poke. I poke, but that doesn't mean it should be poked. I, I'm sure I will poke at some point. I will get fed up, but I'm, ooh. But I don't think I've ever not. I always poke though. This is, I'm like, I want to touch it. But I'm also curious what will happen if I don't touch it, even though they're all basically in a line. Um, ooh, I hope that the weather isn't that bad. Um, you have a grandchild in Western Australia you haven't met yet. Hoping to see him before he turns one. First vaccine next week. Yay! Ooh, ooh, I become eligible for vaccine. So I don't have an appointment yet, but I think tomorrow I get to make an appointment. And I'm really excited and nervous, but mainly because like we've got a routine. And so I'm nervous about how like with the kids' schedules, how we're gonna fit me, like potentially having to go into the city to get, I'm nervous about that. We've got, we've got plans of, and people to help, but I'm like, I just, I, I want to hug my mom. I really want to hug my mom and my dad. Like, um, I'm a super cool mom, thank you. Uh, so no, these color tablets are a bit different. So actually, because, well, we were shopping at Target to see if we could find any. Um, so here are, this is the six color pass kit. The purple that we've got today um, feels a lot more blue. We've got, and the blues both feel a bit more intense. I think I was buying 20 gram minis. So I was using five tablets per 100 grams, which is around the same proportion that I'm using right now but each one maybe isn't on 20 gram worth of yarn so i don't i don't really know but the colors are do seem different and the formulas are likely different the ingredients lists are different so uh there's that poke 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 yeah <laughs> uh yes well I, I i it's not that i do much differently i'm more worried about just like social pressure i don't know i'm a bit of an introvert which maybe isn't obvious but keep in mind that for my day job i stay in my house by myself talking to myself <laughs> so i am fairly introverted even though i am also have an outgoing personality um but yeah so i'm just Parts of the like isolation haven't been so bad. Like not having anything on the calendar has not been bad. I obviously miss like friends and family, but it's also really nice like not having anywhere to be. <laughs> uh, so that is something that is is really good. Um, I always you vote don't poke because I always poke and you want to see what a true no poke looks like. Yes, eventually when I move it to the stove things will move around, but I am going to try to not touch this. Ooh, this one looks cool. Things are spreading and things are looking fun. Okay, you're very steamy, so I'm gonna reduce you. There is still some color in the water. This is actually a fun like fade set here. So of the way I arrange the yarn. Set a timer. I realized I hadn't set one before, but this is, this is such a, um, you know, it probably would be smarter for me to try to upload the picture to Google. See how much the colors have spread? Okay. Phone, road. 
I'm going to drop it in the pot, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> I will totally drop it. I will, oh, I will totally drop it in the pot, and that would be awful. That would be absolutely awful. Actually, maybe I can just get it on the photos. With it. Okay, let's do that. Nope, not yet. So I'll have to wait. Yes, please back up. Why, why won't you do it? Okay, it's getting ready to back them up. Because <laughs> it takes time. Yeah, I betcha she does poke. Yeah, that sounds like me. Um, that sounds like me. Uh, but meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, please make sure you're subscribed to the Chem Mits Tutorials YouTube channel. Subscribing and giving the videos a thumbs up is the biggest way that you can help to support the content that you see here. In addition to impromptu live streams, sometimes I have ones that I plan more in advance. And I think that we have a lot of fun. Uh, I always publish new videos every Tuesday and Friday morning. Plus, we have special series uh, coming up starting on June 20th. We will have the Summer Mini Screen Mini Series, where there will be a week of nightly videos, just like a bonus fun series that is going to feature dyeing mini skeins in various types of fade sets. And it is something so, so much fun. I actually, in the pinned comment in the live chat, I have a link to the pre-order for these sets. You can get a mystery set dyed in one night along with a drawstring reusable bag that uh, I have decorated and then some other fun extras. Uh, you can find that link there. Those will ship out at the end of May and they'll be labeled with a date so you can open it up to see your set of five minis on the night that they were dyed and it's just a lot of fun. And so I have that link there. There's just a couple uh, just a handful left. Huh. Let's see. Um, go order that bear yarn, knit picks or dyer supplier. Um, so I would say that I, I have a review of 7525 yarn uh, where I look at uh, wool to dye for knit picks and dyer supplier. And I love all three brands. Disclaimer. I am a Knit Picks and Dyer Supplier affiliate, which means that I have affiliate links that are down in the description for both companies, um, which means I earn a commission if you make a purchase. So if you click on my link uh, before you shop, I earn a percentage of your purchase. Um, but of course, you have no obligation to do that. Uh, so I like Dyer Supplier and Knit Picks um, and, and Wool to Dye for a lot. I think that they all have different things going for them. If you're planning on ordering in a smaller quantity, Knit Picks may make more sense. They sell, uh, as I have like a bag, a box right here, you can get individual, you can buy single skeins, plus they have free shipping in the U.S. over $65. Uh, Lee Crochet might have a lower minimum for free shipping and they have the same warehouse, so you can check out crochet.com as well. My affiliate link technically, if you go to either after clicking on it, it works for both. Uh, so that would be Knit Picks. Per skein, uh, if you're ordering a larger quantity, Dyer Supplier and Wool to Dye For are probably cheaper. Uh, the, the difference is for Dyer Supplier, I think the minimum for free shipping used to be, I'm not sure what it is now, $175. They do have wholesale, if you have like a if you either order a certain quantity of yarn from them in a year, or if you have an EIN, an employer identification number from be, being a registered business, you can get a wholesale account with them. And you can also get a wholesale account with uh, Will to Die For. And then you get, can get discounts. So uh, I hope that that helps. But basically, I've, I order from all three all the time. Each one has certain bases that I really like. They have things that are unique. I would say Will to Die For has the biggest range in yarn bases by far by far um, but wool to die for has some that are incredibly unique like their silvery sock is amazing it has so much selena in it it is the sparkliest i've ever seen 
Um, let's see. I'm realizing I, I, okay, so my last pair of glasses was 10 years ago and I don't really wear them. And I'm really feeling now that I need glasses again as I come closer to read. Uh, let's see, yeah. Oh, the Dyer Supplier 7525 is three ply. The Knit Picks and Wool to Die For are four ply. And I would say Knit Picks and Wool to Die For are pretty much dupes. They have like almost the exact same yardage too. Uh, in France, you have uh, four weeks of school clothes. Oof. Um, what are some things that you can make with minis? Pretty much anything that you can make with anything else. I think that with minis, you can do like gradients and fades really well for small projects. And so if you wanted to do socks and have like that fade up, an advantage of using minis versus a sock length or a gradient cake of yarn is that you can control where the colors shift. So if you want like closer on the, oh God, if you want closer to the toe, you're like, okay, I want the next color already. You can switch a little earlier and still go back and forth um, to make matching socks. Uh, whereas with a sock length, unless you cut the yarn and then like move and move to a different part, you, you are a little more limited in where the transitions happen, which can be a good or a bad thing. But minis I've used in, I like to use both in scrappy type projects where you use a lot of random stuff, or I would use um, a thicker one in a hat to get like a little bit of a, some kind of color fade and things like that. Uh, so that's, that's what I like minis for. But it's, it's also, as a dyer, I love minis for testing out different techniques and exploring things like that. And so uh, the last year, whoops, sorry about that. Last year in the summer mini scheme mini series, I really, really focused on, nope, nope. I focused on swatching. And so these were some of the, these are some of the sets that I created at the end. And I think that last year with one exception was all based on tonals. This year, there are some tonals. There are some more wild variegated. There's, there's like a, there's a mix of techniques. And so therefore a mix of different types of yarn. And so it's really fun to then at the end of the video, lay them out and then see like how they look together and see the asymmetry from whatever technique I did. And so then thinking about, ooh, I, if I put these five together, it looks like a really fun progression of color. And so it's just a fun way to play with color. And there was, okay, so this is 20, this year is 20, 21. Last year is 2020. Okay, in 2019, in the summer, I did a sampler, more like what I did with Hanukkah, where I had one um, mini from each night. And the thing that was hard for me with that is that I was playing with different fade techniques, and then I was breaking them up. And that made me really sad because some of those sets that I created are incredible. And I was like, these would be so beautiful together in one project, and yet here I am splitting it up. And so that's one thing that's fun about what I'm doing this year is that uh, I can keep those fun sets that work together together. And um, yeah, I think that that's fun. So things don't look like they're moving a lot, but they might be moving. We'll wait for that timer to go off. Um, you said your internet dropped out when I accidentally swapped to my please stand by. <laughs> I just clicked on the wrong thing. Um, I'm probably around the age for reading glasses. Yeah. I mean, I think also just my eyes are getting tired and oh man, I think that, yeah, I was just like, okay, I'm having more trouble reading the computer screen. I mean, but the weird thing is with reading glasses is that I've always been nearsighted. And so I needed the glasses for like distance, but for like distance reading. Um, and like I didn't technically need them for driving or anything. Like I did driving tests and stuff without them. Um, so yeah, I mostly just had them and 
I mean, I got them again when around when, so I have chronic fatigue syndrome and one of the symptoms that I get with the extreme fatigue is that I have trouble focusing my eyes. But part of that is a, versus being an ocular thing, problem with my eyes, it is more of a fatigue thing. And that like, when you're tired at the end of the day, like things are blurry and you're like rubbing your eyes because you're tired. So that can be one of my symptoms as well. So it's hard to know sometimes if I'm tired and therefore that's why I like, oh, sometimes things feel weird with my eyes or if I legit need glasses. And so I got those glasses with a very weak prescription around the time that I was going through all this. because I was like, I can't focus my eyes on anything. And I think it turned out to be more than just my eyes. Um, have I tried wool to dye for kid silk mohair? No, I don't think I've tried that one. Um, thank you. Um, and I'm oh, I'm only thirty seven. Wait, am I? Yes, I'm thirty seven. I was born in eighty three, but December. So therefore. I always get confused because in this year I will turn 38. Yes. And so, but it's always confusing. So sometimes I forget how old I am because uh, the year math doesn't usually help me. You love my videos because you're always in humor and laughing at school. Oh, thank you. I am not afraid to laugh at myself. That is true. Oh my goodness. Oh, I need to turn on um, time steps. The color green is moving towards the yellow color. Um, oh yes, up there. Oh, you can't see where I'm pointing. I'll go stand up. I will stand up, but where is, oh my gosh, I have too many windows open. This is ridiculous, Rebecca. I have a problem of keeping too many tabs open at a time. But yes, that was a very, very good observation. So the green, ooh, the green is moving right there and the blue is moving down there for sure, for sure. So I'm going to take a, can I take a picture of this already? Oh, right, I was waiting for pictures to upload. No, you can't really see. So you can see the green. And then, can I see the blue? There we go. There's that blue down there. The shadows. It's gonna mess up the angle, but there we go. Yeah, so the colors are spreading towards the bottom. Now, here's the reason. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so this color, the orange, has almost completely dissolved. The this blue, the one that looked more purple, you can see the pinks st sticking there. The pink is about half dissolved. The yellow is about half. The green looks like there's still a lot of it there. At some point, I will have to poke. Maybe I will have to poke with a toothpick because we want it all to dissolve eventually. Uh, ooh. I will say colors have moved, but also not moved on our stovetop. Um, Things are actually looking pretty clear. Yeah, things things might actually be fairly clear on the stove. I also think the pink in one area definitely looks a lot more red. All right, I'm turning the heat off on the stove because maybe it'll cool enough that I can comfortably bring it back over to show you all. But let me see. Um, yes, this is riveting television. I have on screen for you right now. Um, let me see if these pictures, yes. Okay. Oh no, 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 no. Nope, that's not the one I wanted to move. Okay. So this is where we are right now. Okay, this is where, where's, oh, my water's all the way over there. Perfect. 
So this is where we are on the stove right now. Um, and you can see that some of the green has traveled up here. Travel up here. Um, we've got some beautiful teals there. And then this pink here got overtaken. Okay, so here, aha, uh -huh, here you can see the blue is spreading and the green is spreading as well. I think I've got, them, yeah, here you can see the green spreading out. Okay, here was a picture that I took a little bit ago of that. That was where we started with that one. Aha, uh -huh, and here we were right after I moved to the stove. And this is where those blues started coming up from the bottom and you can see the greens spread there. And this is where we were right before we went to the stove. So this was still very pink there, but we don't know what's happening beneath the surface. So there is that. Ha, I love being able to switch through things really quickly. Uh, I really could use like a multiple monitor setup. Yeah, there's still some yellows. I'm amazed. But I'll also add that we're using superwash yarn. Stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And since it is superwash, things strike faster. If it was non-superwash, there's a big chance the greens could overtake everything. Uh, in general, when I do cake dyeing and things like that, the average color of most Easter egg tablets tends to be green. That seems tends to be the what binds the slowest, maybe the, maybe it's something about the formula of the green tablets. I don't know, uh, but there's that. Let's see. Aha, and I just showed the yarn on the stove. You're doing yours in a crock pot on low. Um, if it's not clearing after 20 minutes, Lisa, the, there are two things to check. One is that have your tablets dissolved completely because this, Oh, I should set another timer. But this yarn in the pot right here has been in there for 20 minutes. It's not simmering. Are we still hot? It's warm. Uh, I'll set a timer for another 10 and then I'll move it to the stove um, or we'll add more water or something. Uh, so this has been in here for 20 minutes and they have not yet dissolved completely. So those are, I guess, the two factors that can lead to the color not all absorbing yet is that one the tablets haven't dissolved uh, and so if they're still dissolving then you're still releasing more dye and so that's one thing the other could be you might need more acid uh, sometimes i'll start off with a cup of vinegar in one of these pots uh, with dye tablets you're 12 in your head victoria uh yeah i'm probably maybe 15 in my head at times, or yeah, maybe 19, I don't know. <laughs> uh, thank you. You get on board with poking with a toothpick strictly for the purpose of fully dissolving the tablets. Hey, I've gone probably the longest without poking that I've ever gone. I'm trying, I'm trying, but yeah, it's, it's like the, how many times in videos I'm like, I'm not gonna touch it. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to touch it a little bit. Because <laughs> I'm like, there's just that one little bit sticking out, and that's going to bug me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but just besides hugging my parents, I think on my list of things that I haven't done and I'm waiting until I'm vaccinated to do is probably getting a haircut. I am ready, especially with summer coming. I just want probably... Yeah, that's probably like a year's worth of growth. I'm ready to chop. Um, yeah. And yeah, but uh, Lucas actually starts full in-person school tomorrow. And I mean, it's still a weird week because it's teacher conference days, so he has a bunch of half days. But he has been hybrid since September, which means he's only been in person two days a week. And the whole fall it was just until about lunchtime and then starting in January he's gone in until about two and so starting this week I'll, he'll be in all five days and so they're combining the cohorts but they're also doing surveillance testing pooled surveillance testing so 
Um, it's pretty cool because they are sending home, like, sending home the kits. The parents collect the swabs. I don't know how many they run together in the pool, but they do it by cohort. Um, and so basically, if there's a positive, then they can run all those samples individually. But if the, if the pool is negative, then all the samples in that pool were negative. And so it's a way to quickly batch test the kids. And so um, I'm very excited about that. So that should keep, um, keep everyone healthy, I hope. You also want to stir them again. Yeah. Um, a dropper of water. Ooh. They do a little like pipetti things, but I'm not quite sure where. I mean, I know where they are, but the problem is I just got a huge, we're putting like a new shelf up. So that way I often, we have this like bench where we used to keep the kids' backpacks and stuff. And it's frequently covered in various white containers and aluminum containers of things drying. Because I'm like, I can't stack these cups until they're completely dry before we, I put them away where they go. And so we're gonna put a shelf, like a, a metal shelf, so that way I have a place designated place to stack things that are drying. I'm very happy about that. Um, yeah, I don't I don't have an eyedropper handy. I have some pet pets uh, somewhere, but I think that they're drying and so I'm not 100% sure where they are right now. Um, I think I am going to take a brief break and drink some water. Um, I will put up my pause and I'm going to put in a brief ad break, but I will be right back in like a minute or so. So please hang tight. drink some water. Uh, yeah, so we had for our break fast, we had pizza tonight um, and like garlic knots and stuff. And I'm just like, I, I said this at the beginning of the stream. And I was like, Ryan, what kind of pizza do you want? He's like, matzo pizza, cheese, matzo pizza, which for him is literally just melted cheese on a slice of matzo. No sauce, nothing else. And I'm like, no, no, honey, Passover's over. You can have like pizza pizza or bread or something else. And he's like, I want matzo pizza. My kids love matzo, especially with uh, salmon and cream cheese. <laughs> so the only complaint that we got was this year at school, uh, this year, the whole district, they're giving all the kids in the district free lunch at school. And so I told Lucas that he had to bring lunch during Passover. And so he was sad because like getting to buy lunch is really exciting. Yes, a cup of tea. You have a variety of bases, Swish, Glow, Stroll Glimmer, Hawthorne, and Alpaca Sock. Ooh. Um, it probably worked, and if it didn't, don't worry about it. Oh, is it the, um, ooh, ooh, is it this one, which is amazing? Oh, it's back in stock. I wanted to buy more of this, and then, what else is in my cart? Where's the quantity? How many do I want? Like 10 million. So 
don't let me do it. I'm not actually going to order a thousand. So much. You'd be like, why is my cart so expensive? Just to remind myself. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't sound right. That, that's, that's, that's not, that's not a thousand. I think it only added a hundred. Um, oh, oh, cause I did, I did my order on lead crochet. So that's why I still have stuff there. So funny. Um, okay. So apparently you can't just, uh, put a thousand. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. If you want, Nitpix does offer, if you buy 20, you get 15% off. Um, but you have to buy it through the bulk fair yarn page. You can't just add 20. Uh, but yes, I really liked, I don't think I've dyed the alpaca sock yarn yet, but when I got it, I got really excited by it and wanted more. Um, wanted more. Oof. I'm seeing more, like I'm being tagged in more and more Easter egg posts. <laughs> Well, the nice thing with like knit picks is that lately I've been doing fewer orders a year, but doing larger purchases, but I order, I spend a lot of money with them, <laughs> a lot, a lot of money. Um, yeah, it was really, really soft. I don't think I've dyed it yet. And I don't know where, one of my goals for the year is to work through all the like miscellaneous boxes of random. Well, I mean, this is, Capretta Superwash, so that's not random. Um, but I need to put everything away. Basically, I ran into trouble because my the shelves in my studio are full, and I have a closet in there that was I was been using as a dresser. I we put shelves in, and I would just stack folded clothes on it, but. We actually got me a dresser so that way I can stack yarn on the shelves that I've been using as a dresser. So therefore I have more storage and therefore I can easily access. And we have fewer boxes like this sitting everywhere in the house. Part of my problem, uh, part of my problem is that I don't um, I don't even remember. One of my problems, I just don't have a, a good, I have a good organization for the bases I use the most, but then a lot of the other ones end up in these bins and I don't know what I have. And so therefore don't use it. All right. We're going to poke and move this to the stove, but actually phone, let's take a photo. Uh, of you. I'm like really leaning here. Okay. So the orange has basically disintegrated. Oh no. <laughs> the pink is crumbly and soft. Same with this blue right here. Ooh, this is so pretty. Okay, they're all they're all crumbly. And then yellow is getting the other side of the toothpick. The yellow is not that crumbly. Okay, I'm sort of crumbling it a little bit to get it in there. All right. I just took a picture. I'm going to move this to the stove and I'm going to try really hard not okay moving it. I am seeing some spread from the motion. Some orange spread one direction. I will take a picture now immediately after moving it. It's mostly around the edge. So some orange moved. It's because the yarn doesn't go all the way around. Um, 
but when I do a, like a recap, a br it'll be a quickie, a quick recap. But when I do a recap for the stream, then I'll show um, these pictures. But here is, oof. Here is our yarn and it's looking Yeah, I see a little bit of pink staining on the bottom and a little bit maybe of some staining of other colors. Oh, I should have taken a picture. But yeah, I'm not seeing any other pigment. And so the yarn is still quite warm, but I'm going to remove it. And I have one more skein soaked, so we may as well just put that in and do another oh, look at that that's so fun and so we do have white left because i added so much acid but also because uh this is a super wash yarn if this were wool of the andes ooh, this is so pretty like this is so fun Oh, I love, love, love doing this. Now, this one had so much purple at the end because I added a pink down there, which looks pretty red. These are, this brand is really pigmented. It's really nice. Da, 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 da. Okay. We have... A lot of acid in here, and there's heat in here too. And there's a lot of water. It's like a trifecta. I mean, it's not boiling. I'll put my hands in, but okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, maybe I'm not going to put my hands in. Okay, this time. Hmm, I'm trying to decide how I want to stick them in. If I want to do like a ring. Yeah, I might go around the outside. Um, So we're going to see a lot of blend. We're going to do blue and blue. We are going to do green and yellow and then orange and red. And then we're going to watch what happens. So we've got plenty of acid in here. The pink, okay, here it comes. Okay, so the pink just completely fell apart. I think it's got red three, so it's probably gonna strike quickly, but also potentially crash out of solution. We saw some of that at the bottom. The blue, I'm seeing some like speckles. I think it's also disintegrating quickly. I'm trying to get some pictures. The orange is doing more what I'm like used to. Um, and ooh, here where I can see some pink. There's some like pink frothing down there, which is really cool. This is so cool looking. Oh, I hear. Ooh, since turning on the heat, things have spread with my non-poked. My minimally poked yarn so yeah the water there looks purple but it's um definitely breaking okay do i see more the orange is the slowest to dissolve so that's pretty cool let me see if i get up on photos okay the backup is complete so let me see um, 
Nope. I didn't do it yet. So not yet. Um. Oh, your ear dying to help dye the yarn. That's so cool. Um. Oh, you each got a skin of wool and the undies to dye? Oh, that's so fun. That's so awesome. Okay, um, excuse me real quick. about that um look at how whoo okay so the blues the pink is stretching down there the green is gonna take over the orange it's gonna happen uh what's gonna be hard is mm, it's hard not doing this on the oh dear i just moved it hard not doing this on the heat because i'm gonna have to move it i wonder what we're gonna see come through to the center first i'm very excited okay camera's still working and you want to add a tab straight to the middle? Yes. It's hard not to, but I'm curious what's going to happen. So that's why I'm not. I'm very curious. Uh, hmm. Make myself small so I don't hide the action. The blue diffuses faster. So blue, yes, blue food coloring takes more heat, acid, and time to bind than reds, um, so it tends to go through pretty quickly. But I, I'm curious what, I have faith things will spread, and if they don't, then we'd have fun pops of color. Uh, <laughs> I, this is one, though, where it would be really fun to film a time lapse. Oh, let me see if the photo uploaded. Yes. Um, if I go to here, you can see how this is where I did not poke and oh, I could show those close-ups now. Um, so this was right before I, this is right after I got it to the stove. You can see the orange um, here moved a little bit. And that is, I think, before I took it over there. So, and, okay, so here, see those tiny, oh, I could use my mouse, these tiny blue speckles that I saw over by the blue. And here's that pink tablet completely disintegrating. And the orange tablet at like the same time, just still fully formed. So the chemistry of the different tablets is definitely different. Um, and then the blue is so saturated. And so that's what it looks like far back. But yeah, this was the no poking, but carrying it over did move things because, well, actually carrying it did not move it as much. Adding the heat did move things. So I'm curious, I don't think I have a timer set right now. I'm curious what it'll look like in a little bit, but, uh, yeah, and those, uh,
I like, and of course, the colors there are so much better than what's coming through in my webcam. But that it is what it is. Uh, you know, it's, I don't mind people sharing what they would want to do. Part of me wants to do it, but part of me, oh, I should come here. Part of me is believing it for science. <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes I'm just curious what will happen. And sometimes I just do it with like deeper water and plop things in. And there was one, I think I did it in... I think there was a live stream I did after I broke my foot, the one that had to be postponed. In that live stream, I definitely, I think I played with Easter egg tablets and um, got a beautiful like blend. I did all the like cool toned colors. So Catherine, I've done crushing the tablets um, and using the sprinkles. Let me see if I can find. So I'm going to wait for the ad to go before I bring you guys over. No point making you guys watch an ad that <laughs> isn't going to do me any credit for you watching an ad. Although it's just a Google ad. Um, oh, my hair was so short. My hair was so short. I want short hair. Oops. Okay, so I crushed up. Oh, so I took the tablets and I crushed them in a baggie. And I used, I think I tried using a rolling pin and all kinds of other things. So it's actually pretty hard to crush them. And I got varying size um, pieces of these tablets to, to look at, which uh, I think some of it worked well, uh, and so then I speckled it sort of all over onto the yarn with some thick chunks and some small, and things spread. We did get speckles. It was fun because I think I did, I didn't do all the colors. I think I did red, pink, purple, blue, and green. I left it up there, and I went in and I went heavy, and the yarn is beautiful. Uh, we got these gorgeous rainbow multicolored specks, some micro speckles, some larger speckled spots. It worked fine, but it is an expensive way to speckle. And so I think if you're interested in speckling with this, I would either make a concentrated liquid dye and use a fork to speckle onto the yarn, or I would mix your food coloring with some citric acid or some sugar to make little sprinkles and use that to get really tiny specks versus and even make sugar sprinkles and then grind them up to make it a finer powder to get even smaller speckles. I would recommend doing that over crushing these dye tablets because I think that uh, just cost wise it is more cost effective to do that with liquid food coloring then crushing up the sprinkles. But, I mean, of course, if you want to do that, you can. It's just, I think that in terms of effort and cost, that's why I was exploring other ways to play with sprinkles. Um, okay, I have my little Mud's Dye Easter eggs. <laughs> I figured my net, ooh, that's looking cool. So let's see. Is that spreading because of bubbles in the water or does the heat in general make the color spread? Uh, back in terms of the one on the stove. So diffusion, which is the movement of molecules and stuff through water, happens at different rates. And when things are warm, um, when water is warm, the molecules are moving around faster. So diffusion can happen faster when things are warm. So I don't think it's necessarily because of bubbles from being at a simmer, but certainly if there is movement from the heat in there and the heat is moving and causing that liquid to move, it can move the yarn and move the color more. So that's one reason why we might see more spread 
when we add that more heat than when we have warm water and things just sitting. <laughs> Understandable. Thanks for joining for so long, Christine. Oh yeah, I'm like, what do I have to do? Ryder still has, even though Pesach is over, he has remote school tomorrow. And then he has a Zoom day on Tuesday because they want after, he just had spring break, so they want time for people to get tested uh, before they go back to school. So then he goes back on Wednesday. So Ryder takes more prep for school because he needs like sheets for like nap, even though he doesn't sleep, he just rests. Um, Lucas, I think, is ready to go. I got a, his teacher, I think they go through like a canister of like Lysol wipes almost like every one to two days. So I got a bunch more for her. Um, Costco, is, they're limiting one per customer, but Costco has them and they deliver. So, oh, this is so fun. I'm so glad people were able to join last minute. I haven't done just like a, I feel like being live and popping on uh, to dye yarn in a while. I do that for unboxings and stuff. But again, a plug, make sure you're subscribed. Thank you. And I promise I don't sing very often. <laughs> We're getting another situation where it's going to be hard for me not to poke. Ooh. So let me see. The orange is looking powdery. This looks cool. There's like pink with like a red inner circle almost. Aha. Looking towards the center, I see yellow right here. I see green under the strands right there. I see orange starting to move through. And then I see blues on the underside. Nothing quite coming up towards the surface yet. But I know when I move it, maybe I shouldn't move it. Maybe I should just let this sit overnight. How warm is it? It's still warm. It's tempting. Is today Sunday? Yeah, today's Sunday. So I'm like, okay, who's gonna be at first tomorrow? Okay, so in my not poking, things haven't changed very much from the last time. Um, I am, I think I need to add more water. I'm going to come in with a toothpick and poke again because there's some stuff that's not dissolved. But I'm going to be very careful. I'm really focusing the poking on the uh, localized spot. Yellow is almost done. There is, in fact, still some yellow. Okay, I think all the tablets are at least, like, poked down. I'm really curious what's happening with the pink. Um, just because, like, there's, like, a bright thing of pink. The green is spread the furthest, I would say. Aha, here I see some pinks crashing out of solution. I'm going to take a picture of that. So red three, oops, I just definitely bumped it. Red and, and we're about to have combining. I'm seeing almost like a full layer of color beneath the surface. This is so cool. Um, red number three. Uh, which is the hot pink as, uh, food coloring, does not like very acidic conditions. This is why when you go through the Gatorade aisle, you'll find things with red 40, but not red 3. They don't use it in beverages that have acidity uh, because you'd see the, the like particles in there. And so that's why when I dye with Wilton's Violet, I add the acid to the dye as close to when it's gonna come in contact with the yarn as possible. Those reds will start striking so fast that if it is exposed to the liquid first, then it might crash out. Um, 
So is it the vinegar that helps the color bind to the wool like it does with the eggshell when dyeing eggs? Um, it allows the color to be brighter on the wool than it normally. Okay, so basically the chemistry of an eggshell is different from the like chemical makeup of wool. And it is harder because if you, if you consider the way I don't know exactly what shells are made out of, but if you consider the way that a shell, part of its job is to prevent things from getting through and part of it is to protect the yolk and the growing chick inside, uh, it is harder to penetrate and you, while like you can dye it, it doesn't accept like the food-based dye like as well as wool, which just sort of soaks soaks it up and binds it because it's a protein and it's got all the wonderful amino acid art groups that are loving actually it might be the backbone i'm not entirely sure where the dyes are binding um so there is that uh let it sit overnight and and steam if the colors are struck or i can just put it yeah i might I, rather than steaming i would probably just pop it on the the stove directly in the morning um, happy egg day yeah we are still using the same plastic eggs that we bought many years ago I reuse them until they break and those are also something that I bought on clearance uh, because there was one year I think when Lucas was like it was about 18 months we're like oh we should probably do like an egg hunt and then we're like oh we I can't find eggs anywhere and so then we did a Duplo hunt. So we took a bunch of Duplos and hid them around the playground and he went and he collected them. But instead of putting them in the bucket, he like had to be stacked them all together and it was really adorable. So, oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So yes, yeah, so the vinegar, the vinegar is necessary for, um, for the dice to bind to the yarn. I imagine that there's probably proteins in the, in the shell of an egg and it is able to like do something pretty similar. And so basically a lot of the instructions are like for bread of colors, add vinegar. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't have a lot of egg dyeing experience. With popping in the center between the yellow and the green. Um, it was mostly yellow and green and then over Oh, you can't see my mouse. So it was, I think that's mostly the, the green moving towards the yellow, but there could be some orange in there as well. Um, but that just looks like a shadow also. Oh, my pleasure. Well, but it's, it, it's less about the hard versus soft, but I think that in general, one reason that I can hypothesize why the egg could be harder to dye is just that since the surface is less porous, um, that would make it harder. Uh, so the, like, there's some paints that you can use on a porous surface that don't work on a non-porous surface um, because they just won't stick as well and they need to grip to something. And so, yeah, uh, just like I we had a really cheap bookshelf we got the kids that I put, I use Mod Podge, Mod Podge with, um, photographs, family photographs all over the sides and it started peeling off on one spot and I'm like, because it's too smooth for the glue. Yeah, I, I think that that one, I'll, I'll go, I'll go check. Doo -doo, doo -doo. Uh, yeah, so I would say the green, here's the like, border of the green that I see right now. The orange is like that. What? Oh, okay. I tapped something and it was hard and I was about to be like, what the, the, wh what the, what? And I was like, why did the, the yarn like solidify? And then I'm like, that's my zip tie. <laughs> okay. So then the pink is going like that, it's, the pink is coming onto the yellow. The yellow is like here. And then the blue, the blues have stayed pretty far. 
from the others so far. So that's sort of where the blues are. This is really, really cool. It's really hard to not poke it. I hope that you all admire my self-control right now. I just want to like tap it or like blow. It's just wild when you see the colors and it's like the greens just sort of like hanging out. I'm like, oh, I'm right there. Hi, I'm not really moving. We're good. We're just hanging out. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Let me see. There is still color in our other pot. Ooh, a lot of blue. A lot of blue. I think I'm going to turn off the heat on the stove and try not to move that. And I'm going to also let that sit until the morning. Uh, which, at which point I probably won't be able to get a photo before everyone goes to school. Normally, I'm the one that's really good at waking up with the alarm. I say normally. Okay, I took a few pictures of that. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, everyone else, by everyone else, like I'm the one that gets up and wakes everyone up. But then sometimes if I'm tired, then like, you know, run a little late. Oh, I need to remember bus passes. Um, they changed the bus seats. So there's only been like five kids on the bus, but it's been like half and then like the older kids go home earlier. And so, uh, yeah, we'll see if we stop using the bus. Uh, the seven and a half year old decided to stop watching and play Rebecca from Chemnitz again. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm very proud of my self control as well. Oh yeah, there's no H in my name, which is adorable that she knew <laughs> how to spell my name. Yep, two C's and an A is how mine is spelled. But I don't, um, misspellings don't bother me at all. Uh, so I roll with it. And I even get um, the occasional like Rachel's and Jessica's, which, you know, I roll with it. <laughs> all right, but I think everyone I am going to need to sign off because, uh, yeah, I will have to get children ready for school tomorrow. But thank you so much for joining me tonight, um, especially on Easter. Uh, and just as we dice and learn using some, of course, not this brand, but using some Easter egg dye tablets. So again, if you want to dye yarn with Easter egg dye tablets or food coloring, you want a protein-based yarn. Wool, alpaca, silk, unfortunately, food coloring will not work on cellulose fibers like cotton, linen, hemp, and, and synthetics like acrylic and polyester. Blends can work, but the colors will be less muted. Uh, the more fiber there is that can't be dyed with food coloring, the more muted the color will be overall. Uh, so that's just important to keep in mind as you are making uh, your plans. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. So yes, so there's that. Uh, subscribe and turn on your notifications. If you turn on that bell, then uh, YouTube will let me know on your phone when I start a live stream or release a new video, which is a handy way to make sure you don't miss out. Uh, and Oh, I don't even know where my phone is. <laughs> uh, and again, I am using my dedicated dye equipment tonight because I was pre-soaking the yarn that I'm dyeing in a five gallon bucket that I use with commercial acid dyes. And whenever I use one of my tools from a dedicated dye equipment, I want to use all dedicated dye equipment. I don't mix any of the spoons or tongs or anything that I'm using with the preparation of food. And I will um, clean and wipe down the counter and everything in the morning before we, we start breakfast um, and things like that. So that's sort of how I swap back and forth. Um, but 
Otherwise, since this is food coloring, I am personally comfortable dyeing yarn with food coloring using my cooking pots and pans. But some people might have different preferences. And so uh, if you're curious about the tools and equipment and the places I buy yarn from, I do have affiliate links um, down in the video description. And so you can have a link to a blog post where I link to all of my favorite like pans and things like that. Um, so I hope that is helpful. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes I th see things and I'm like, oh wait, was this before or, or after? Even though I added the timestamp, I still don't know. But anyway, this was a lot of fun and I am really, really excited to see how everything turns out in the end. I like playing with rainbows and it's fun. Like, I, I'm regretting not filming a time lapse on some of this right now. I love watching how the colors spread in a pot and just watching that like really quickly sped up. So um, make sure you leave down in the comments if you're watching the replay what other things I should do with these Easter egg dye tablets. I have a lot left and this brand is really cool. This of course is not the one the box that I just held up but I do have it at the beginning and so when you watch the replay you can go see what the brand was. So in the meantime thank you all so much for watching and Tuesday, there's a new episode of Dyeball Weekly, uh, and Friday as well. And I should be um, reaching out about the April dialogue in a couple weeks. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching, and I will chat with you soon. Good night. Oh, I don't have like I'm done. And then like a please stand by, like a starting soon. I don't have, I don't have a um, end. So I need to make that. Good night, everyone. <laughs>